Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave and a very special day today as we have yet again another another public open source indicator being revealed by Mr. Caretaker himself, this time going on the Bollinger Band with Percentile. Now, we've been using historical volatility percentile for a while now on this channel, which is very, very useful, no doubt about that. But we decided that it might be worthwhile to kind of check out a different volatility-based metric and see what it would look like on a percentile uh, well, analysis. And in this case right here, I might even go as far, I might even dare to say that this might be better, in my opinion, at least for the uh, the results that I've tested thus far, better than historical volatility percentile. But I'll let you, or at least I'll hand over the keys to you to decide, as again, this is a public indicator, it's freely available, and it's even open source. So if you are programmatically minded, you can uh, do with it as you please. So with that said, first and foremost, how do you find it? Well, just type in on the public library on TradingView, care, uh, CT Bollinger Band with percentile. You probably just need to type in CT Bollinger Band and it should pop up. It should be one of the first ones there. But I actually can't show it right now because it technically is still private, but this will be published soon enough as the as this one does come available. Anyways, this going through the just general definition, so kind of all on the same page, and then we'll go through some examples and actually how to use this practically speaking and whether indicators it might be best used with. We can see that this is, well, as far as definitions go, the Bellinger band with percentile, right? And I'm just going to read it straight off over here. It is derived from the standard trading view Bollinger band with indicator and shows a percentage of bars over a specified look back period that the Bollinger Band width was less than the current Bollinger Band width. That is a little bit wordy right there. But moving on, we do have the Bollinger Band width is derived from the Bollinger Band's indicator itself, the one that you know we typically use on this channel, just stock standard uh, Bollinger Band. Um, and it quantitatively, uh, or sorry, the the width indicator quantitatively quantitatively uh, measures the width between the upper and lower bands of the Bollinger Bands. And of course, this is there's also a volatility-based component of this as well. Bollinger Bands quite literally is a, vol a volatility-based indicator, which consists of three lines which are plotted in rel uh, relation to the securities price. Yes, you already know this. The middle line is your 20 simple, the top side and the bottom side, of course, as well, which are sent which are typically two, about two standard deviations away from the baseline. Anyways, um, volatility, of course, to put, a little, uh, to put another definition here, is just a statistical measurement of of the dispersion of returns for a given security or a market index measured by the standard dev deviation of logarithmic returns. Interesting stuff. Okay, cool. So let's get on to it right here. And uh, I think we can actually just go through the rest of this. It's not as important to what we're going to be talking about. And I think uh, the next the, the next most important thing that we need to talk about is make sure that we're all on the same page for what percentile actually means. So, for example, Caretaker's actually given out a very, uh, very, very uh, uh, simple example right here. A Bollinger Band with percentile, and this just goes for any, anything that's percentile based, of 95. So if the read is 95, that means that the current, that the current level is greater than 95% of the look back period. That means that, well, it's relatively high in comparison. By the same interpretation, if we do look at a Bollinger Band with percentile read of 5, then that means that the current Bollinger Band width level is lower than 95% of the look back period. Very, very stock standard stuff, but do not confuse percentile with percentage. They are not the same thing. A very high percentile is essentially meaning that this is like, you know, kind of an outlier, as is a very low one as well. Um, so with that in mind, what are we going to do with this? Well, let's look at some use cases. Now, of course, you can read through this for yourself, um, but I'm going to show you in the way that I'd be looking at this, and then you can obviously decide for yourself. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go into our charts over here, and I already have it loaded up, as you can see, and it's got a nice little colorful presentation, which you can obviously change yourself. Now, I do want to go through a few settings here first, because this is actually going to massively change the way that it works. I'll show you my settings and the ones that I've been having the best luck with. However, there is um, something to consider on the other side as well okay so obviously price source can be closed no shit uh basis type i'm gonna use a simple moving average could you use an exponential yeah you could in fact in some cases i think that's a little more applicable but the big one here is both the length and the look back okay default will actually have the length at 20 and 20 is a decent read for that but i've actually found better results with a 10 length the look back i like a 252 and that is how many trading days there are in the trading calendar year uh, now, some people use 365 on this. I do not think that that is the optimal way to be using it. Yes, I do understand that Bitcoin does trade 365 days, but it is also on legitimized 
professional exchanges like CME, for example. And so it does typically assign towards the professional schedule. And that is still gonna be about 252 uh, trading days of the year. So I find the best results with 252. Look back, that is pretty much set in stone for myself. The length can be variable. I find better results with 10. You might find better results with 20. Depends what you're looking at essentially. And then for the move and average settings over here, I just put a, uh, actually I put a 30 simple, uh, 30 simple on this one. Um, you can use a 20 as well. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's not going to be a huge component of this, but it can give a little bit of a bias as to whether we are seeing expansion or contracting from a, or contraction from a volatility uh, perspective. Um, alerts on, that's just your background colors right there. So um, you probably keep that on as that's uh, rather useful. And we can go over here to style as well. And this is, again, completely your personal preference. I'll just show you mine. It's going to be the, uh, the stock standard ones right here. And that's all that I care to look at. I think it's actually uh, presented rather well, uh, visually speaking. Okay. All right. So now that we got that through, again, the big ones are just the length and the look back here. And then, you know, whatever moving damage you want, just put it on there. It, it, you don't even need one as well. Uh, just want to get like a quick insight as far as what the slope is and the relationship between a, the actual uh, the actual BBWP is to the moving average. Sometimes there are there are some some uh, some strategies to play there. OK, so let's zoom on in. All right. So how do you use this indicator? Well, essentially what we are looking for is we are looking for outlier reads on this one. We are looking for when this gets especially into the red zone or the blue zone. The red zone is when things are incredibly, 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 uh, as I search my words right now, expanded. And that means that it is more likely to go into a contraction phase from a fiscal uh, standpoint. By the same token, when things get incredibly contracted, like you see on the blue reads down here, it's a lot more likely to lead into an expansion phase. So with that in mind, whenever we are looking at something that is incredibly high right here, in this case, we're looking for, at the very least, a little bit of sideways. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for consolidation. That's what it's giving the bias towards as we go into a contraction phase. As naturally speaking, once you get to you know 100 percentile or, or 90 or even just anywhere in the 90s, it's a lot more likely to kind of go in. It's telling you that we're in a, we're at we're at an extreme for this uh, for this move. By the same token, to the downside over here, or not necessarily the downside, but on the extreme contraction zone, it's saying, hey. This is very mature within this consolidation. It's likely to break out. Look for a trending move. So how can we use this in practice? Well, first and foremost, if you're trading options, this should be rather obvious whenever things are, you know, especially above like the 80 percentile or, or even 90 percentile in this case, uh, you know, I'm going to be looking to, to be a net seller of Vega. I want to be, you know, I want to be uh, short options for the most part and uh and, and and kind of take care of that by the same token you know when things are relatively low those are one of the few times we'll actually be buying some premium and uh, be long vega in this case right here though let's go through the most recent example where we do see that we printed some red right here now these are just alerts for when it gets extremely extremely um uh, expanded now of course even if it just gets like into the orange it's it's pretty you know it's pretty mature there anyways so it is a bit of a uh what's it called um, it, it is a bit of a conundrum, but uh, but again, we are looking for extremes. And what do you know? When we hit an extreme right here, what is Bitcoin doing? It's actually putting in the high of this current rally. And while this is a pretty massive range, it ultimately is just that a range and a range is what consolidation. So what do we what is the bias after we see this read right here for a couple days in a row? The bias is to be looking for a local high and then look for some sideways consolidation. And then the resolution of that uh, of that consolidation is, well, your next trending move. And you typically want to seek a contraction phase after that. You can see over here we get the red and become all the way down to about a 50 percentile. And then your trending move actually does uh, transact from that. Now, now, that brings into the question, what exactly are we looking for on that trending move? Or exactly what percentile it, you know, do trending moves become more and more likely? Well, obviously, lower and lower is going to be better and better. It essentially implies a more healthy and uh, long-form consolidation, aka building a bigger base, likely going to create a bigger result. Um, but in this case right here, you know, anything around a 50 is kind of like, all right, we've cooled off quite a fair bit, and then we get our, our next continuation drive. Completely fine. Uh, same thing over here. You can see that this prints red. And what happens? We do see that it trades sideways for one, two, three, four, five, six, basically a week right there. And then continuation, continuation once again. Um, let's see. Let's find some examples to the other side. Okay, here we go. This one technically does not give a blue read in the back. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Very unprofessional. Apologies. <laughs> I got some uh, seasonal allergies going on, I think. But as you can see over here, we're actually not flashing the blue in the background. Again, that is just a visual cue for when it's extremely low. I think, or at least in my experience, any anytime when it gets into like the teens and especially the single digits, look, things are very mature within that consolidation. Breakout can happen at any time. 
And in this case right here, what do we see? Goes down into the three or two percentile actually. And what do you know? Soon after that, trending move emerges and lovely, lovely, lovely glory times for the next few months really. And same thing over here, right? This one actually printing multiple reads as you can see and, uh, and eventually leading into the next major continuation move. Uh, what about coronavirus dump times? This is March 2020. We do see that uh, BBWP it gets incredibly red right here. And what do you know? That actually marks the low as well. Not bad. And what do we see over here? Gets, uh, gets into the blue zone once again, deep into the single digits. And well, there's your next trending move all the way from 7,000 to 10,500 bucks. Not bad. Same thing over here puts in a nice uh, put, puts a nice consolidation before further continuation of the downside puts in a nice uh, expansive read right here on the high of this rally again this one gets up to a, a little bit above 90 percentile so again if i were doing this personally i would actually put the alerts when it gets into the 90 plus or below 10 percentile um, as those are where I really want to be cognizant of, you know, extremely, extreme likelihood of moves as it, this indicator, as it comes default, will only show you these, uh, bars when it's either a zero or a 100 percentile. Um, so I would actually, I would actually suggest changing that, uh, cause at least for myself and my sort of trading style, it's going to be more, uh, more, more relevant. So I'll actually put this right here and boom, 90 and boom, uh, see, that should fire off a lot more signals on this. And there you go. Lovely. All right. So now it's a lot more easy to see, as you can see. And uh, there we go. In fact, actually to the upside, you know what I'll do? I'll actually do 90, like 92, just so it's a little bit outside. Do like an eight right there. All right, there we go. Yeah, I just want a little bit more of those crazy reads. I want to see it actually get red. Uh, same thing over here. You know, we put in our high right here, trade sideways for months. And then <laughs> once it gets blue, there's your trendy move. Lovely. Same thing over here. Gets red, goes sideways for a little bit, continuation drive. So how do you trade this? Okay, a million goddamn ways to trade this. And this is obviously up to you at the end of the day. Um, but now that we have essentially a bias on whether things are going to go into a contraction, aka consolidation or expansion, aka trend, what I look for, if you want to do this in the most simple of senses, is I will is I will essentially mark off the highs and lows of that range. So in this case right here, we see that we hit the red right here. So what do we do? We mark off the high of it. Okay, nice. Then if we, well, we don't, we, we barely even see it on the, on the daily here, but you know, where's the low side of the range? Obviously you don't have it yet until you see this guy right here. And really you probably have to go down to like a four hour in order to really see the low side of the range. But let's just, you know, assume that this is, and then the break of this range is going to be your trending move. So what I would say is, is that the, the, um, uh, sorry, the, the extremely high expansive read right here, such as the bias that, Hey, we're looking for a contraction phase. So a little bit of sideways, that's our range right here. And then the break of that range is our next resolution um, for a trending move in this case. And again, this one actually doesn't come down all that much. I mean, this was more or less due to the fact that we were quite literally, you know, really just freshly breaking out of prior all time highs. That's just more, more or less market awareness in this case. But, you know, if, you know, if you're combining multiple different forms here, you will naturally get some like that. Uh, same thing over here. You know, we do have, uh, we do see red being printed right here. And this, in this case, obviously this one is going to be not as impressive. This was like a 97 percentile. And this is just due to my current settings. Like you saw, in fact, it might even be worthwhile to do like 95 five and again just because it's showing red in the background doesn't mean like you know that is a high obviously this one goes a little bit higher this one literally hits a 100 percentile right here anyways my point is with this is that once we hit the 100 percentile that should be a clear and obvious visual cue that this is like it, it, it quite literally cannot go higher bro like 100 percentile is 100 percentile doesn't mean that it can't go higher as far as price action goes but it's time to be looking for a range high and in this case it takes about uh, three closures right here boom we mark that off easy then bitcoin comes down basis on this level right here what do we do we just mark off the lex the next the next wick low and then now we have an obvious range so what do we do now well i would suggest waiting for a little bit of a sideways consolidation where we do this kind of trend down a bit as it gets below the moving average on it which we'll reference soon or so we'll talk a little bit more in depth uh, soon enough and then the next break outside of that range that's your next trending move boom hits a high right here Actually, this one prints red on um, this one right here, to be fair. Uh, and actually, and this is obviously not like the the best area. I mean, it, it technically does be uh, technically speaking, it does create a bit of a range right here between this area and this area. And then we do get a break of that range on the uh, sorry, on the contraction. And that does lead to your next high. But my point is, is that this one actually it would be an example of it not working perfectly. So as always, is this indicator perfect? 
No, there are going to be faults with it, but in in uh, in practice, I do find a lot of uh, use for this. Um, anyway, so that's essentially probably the most simple way that uh, that I could look at this one. Are there going to be more sophisticated ways to use this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can probably think of a million different ways yourself. Anything that gives a bias on direction is going to be incredibly useful for something like this. And I can also show you just really briefly here, if you want uh, less extreme reads, what you should do is you should put on a 20 length instead of a 10. This is actually how it will come default. And you'll see that it massively smooths this out. And, uh, and to be fair, this is only going to give you like the extremely egregious reads. So you see like this area right here, see this area right here, see this area right here, see this area right here. And all these are mega pivots to be fair. So the, this is only going to really speak towards the very, uh, the very long-term looks, the greater moves. If you want the more short-term moves, I'd suggest using something more around a 10, maybe even a 13 could be okay too. Anyways. Um, Okay, so let's talk about the moving average on this as well. All right, so the moving average has an obvious interplay with the actual BBWP. And there's a couple ways to be looking at this and a couple things to be considering. First and foremost, what is the slope of that moving average? And if you're using a 20 period like I am or a 21 period, well, it's just aggregating the last 21 reads. That's all. It's just making an average of that. Well, the slope of it tells you whether we are generally expanding or generally contracting. That is interesting in and of itself. You can see right now we are seeing the slope actually kind of level out a bit, which kind of plays into my theory that right now Bitcoin is more or less ranging sideways. And what do you know? We hit a nice high right here. Boom. And there's and there's a sideways range for a while. Um, now, this is going to look better on a 10, to be fair. It's actually going to get a little more accurate for this current range. Uh, but in this case right here, <clears throat> we do see that that can give a bias on the current sort of uh, feeling of that, you know, of that series. Now, on top of that, we can also look at the relationship between the BBWP, like where it is, and the moving average on it as well. So that is to say, when BBWP is above the moving average, and especially if it has a positive slope, we are obviously expanding its time, its its trending time, and uh, and and that is well, that's really all that it is. <laughs> and by the same token, when BBWP is below the moving average, and the moving average has a negative slope alongside that, we are going into a contraction phase, aka more consolidation. So with that in mind. Uh, what would be the other sort of uh, potential interpretation? Well, I mean, if you see, uh, for example, actually, this one's a good example right here, perhaps. Uh, we see that uh, BBWP is below the moving average, but the moving average is technically not in a negative slope. Is that concerning? No, it doesn't really tell you that much. I wouldn't, I wouldn't make any assumptions based off that. It tells us that we are more or less uh, just waiting, you know, waiting for a resolution. And that is exactly what I would be feeling right here, you know, on this current, uh, on this current move on Bitcoin. Anyways, um, what other indicators can we use with this in order to generate a bias? Well, I'm glad that you asked. <laughs> what we can do over here is we can, I don't know, let's just put on something really simpler. Uh, put on a Stoke. Stoke gives you a little bit of a directional bias, and let's see how this kind of plays into it. All right, here we go. Okay, just your stock standard Stoke. Uh, I'll put on my settings really quickly here, just because why the hell not? You can also use like an RSI too. I mean, whatever whatever you decide to use, we'll do. Uh, actually, look like this there we go all right smooth it out a little bit and make those reads a little bit uh a little bit less often and what do we have right here okay so for example when we do see that it hits a mega high right here and this is about what how high do we get 97 and a half percentile right there so it's time to be looking for a bit of a contraction phase go on yes this one does continue on here on here to be fair but what do you know after the daily stokes start to turn down a little bit in the critical zone, well, when does that happen? That happens right here. The next day, boom, down. The next few days, continuation all the way to 45,000 bucks, born from the signal at about 57, uh, or sorry, not, not even 57. It's like, yeah, it's actually, yeah, it's about 57,500-ish region. Not bad, not bad at all. More than a $10,000 move. Let's look at one that's on the opposite side as well. All right, so we got several, several, several blue reads right here. Now, again, just because it's blue does not necessarily mean that it is a, it's time to be looking for the breakout move. It's just giving you a likelihood of it. Again, I am using a little bit more aggressive reads with this. In fact, the more that I do look at it, the more that I actually do think that maybe just 100 and zero probably might be the way to go, just so that you really only see like the extreme extremes in this case. Hey, where's my damn extreme, extremist on? <laughs> All right, let's see. Hey, didn't uh, save it right there. Let's go. How about that? All right, there you go. All right, so there's your one reads right there. Okay, sweet. All right, so let's say, let's say that uh, we're looking at this right here. We see, okay, we have a range. So this is why it's important to kind of combine two different things. 
and we see that there actually are a couple of short signals right here from the from from daily stocks as they do turn down. Uh, obviously, they are immediate about the long signals as well, but there's no break of range right here. Where's your range? Your range is right here on this low. Your range high is obviously right here. So you have no breakages of that. So you don't see break of range plus momentum plus BBWP. You only see two of the um, you only see two of the components right there. And the break of the range is the most important one if you're going to use this very simple strategy that I'm kind of presenting right here. Obviously, there's going to be more more uh, relevant strategies or more uh, sophisticated strategies. You know, depending upon your level of, you know, of analysis that you can combine with other things, you know, anything that gives you a uh, directional um, uh, bias on this, like a, you know, an, AD, an ADX DMI or an RSI or CMO, whatever the hell it might be, you know, that is going to be relevant for this. Anyways, in this case right here, what do we see? We do see a break of the range plus Stokes up. Boom. That's that's three of three as we do see it expand. There's a trendy move all the way from about 10,000 to 12 and a half thousand bucks. Not bad, not bad at all. What about uh, on this side over here when we do see a uh, coronavirus dump? We do see that it actually prints red uh, pretty much on the first and second one right there. Excellent. And then we start to go into a bit of a sideways and we can actually mark this off right here. We see this high, we see this low. Okay, nice one. Where does it break the range on a closing basis? Right here, momentum is up. We even get some divergence on that as well. Again, combining multiple things. And what do you know? Bitcoin crawls its way out. So my point is, is that ideally you want to uh, you want to combine this with several other pieces. Uh, some you know something for directional um, uh, momentum. And, and my personal uh, strategy is to use also ranges as well because that is going to be the most obvious way of kind of looking at it. And then momentum also just can kind of give you a slight bias leading into that perhaps maybe even put a little bit of risk on before. Uh, again, I think that this is incredibly useful for options traders out there. And as I check the time to make sure that this isn't too long, as it's about 20 minutes right now, um, you know, play around with this and play around with the settings. Like I said, if you want, uh, it's I, I've actually found very good results with a 10 length right here. And if you're look and if you're looking at lower term time frames. If you're looking at lower term time frames, like an hourly, for example, you're going to get a lot better results with this. You can see that anytime it really gets, uh, you know, into the 90s or above, here's a local low, local low, here's a local high, you know, every uh, almost every fucking time. Not perfect. Nothing's perfect, obviously, but I do find better results with this over HVP, personally speaking. I would suggest that you try it out for yourself I would say, if you're interested, of course, and it's like, no, try it out no matter what. Uh, but, you know, give it a go. And if it works, you know, you know, if you find good results with it, then, hey, go for it. Um, you know, same thing over here, same thing over here. You know, all good. Anyways, we'll go back to the daily for a second. And is there any closing thoughts that I have on this one? Uh, anything that I'm missing right now? Let's get rid of this. We'll just look at it as it is. And we are back on a 10 length. So you can see when it is a 10 length, we do see all of these spikes actually are, you know, in, in the proper order. Now, can you draw trend lines on this? No, I actually do not think so. Trend lines would not work on something like this, at least in my experience. Um, what I'm looking at right here is I'm is I'm just looking at the percentile. In fact, I do not care about uh, trend lines on this uh, in the same way that I could on the HVP. In fact, looking at this right here, um, I'm just trying to think. Is there anything else right now? I think that's actually just about it. I think that actually is just about it. But you can see with a 10 read right here that it actually does get a lot of these local highs extremely well. This one right here, this one, this local low right here, this this major high right here, uh, sort of uh, continuation high right here. But again, gives you the bias to you know, go back into ranging mode, essentially. Same thing on the low side over here. You know, I do quite like this. So I definitely suggest giving it a try. See if it works better, uh, you know, with your strategy. It can give a bit of a bias on timing and sort of a bias on expansion, aka trending or versus consolidation. With that said, I'll end the video right there. Use it well, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.